We're summoning brutes and besieging strongholds. That's right, it's Gutnak from Chaotic Great Games. In this tactical tussle of tusks and toll wars, it's the only sword I can think of that started with a T, two players take on the role of fantasy faction leaders, each vying for victory on the battlefield. Over a series of turns, players will deploy fighters, execute special tactics, and try to besiege their opponent's stronghold. The first player to do so wins the game. Tachi, that's another sword. Also Tonto, there's three. Setup begins with deck building. Each player chooses one faction amongst the four available. Delguan, demon-worshipping subterranean humanoids. Shard Sworn Alliance, a magic shard-addicted confederation that throws some great parties. The Refractory, sun-loving zealots who judge the faithless. And the Gloaming, a bunch of undead. Once chosen, a player may now create a deck of 20 cards, each of which must belong to either that faction or be a neutral card with this symbol. There's a bevy, that's orcish for collection, of suggested decks on page 16 of the rules, but you can also create your own by following the steps on page 15. Next, place the battlefield in between the two players. The battlefield consists of a 3x3 grid of squares. Players will set their faction's stronghold outside of the battlefield behind the middle column. Each player's graveyard is set next to their stronghold space. After placing their stronghold card, they then place their deck atop it. In the battlefield, the row closest to each player is known as their back row. Additionally, the central space in the back row is known as the gates. Players shuffle their decks and draw a starting hand of five cards. Each player may choose to keep those cards or shuffle the whole hand back into their deck, minus the stronghold card, and draw a new hand of five cards. Each player may only do this once. Select the first player randomly, and we are ready to start the game. Before we delve into gameplay, let's look at the cards, which come in two types, fighters and tactics. Fighters have a name and fearsome art, faction banner, which has an outline for hero fighters and no outline for basic fighters, a power value ranging from one to three, traits, which trigger various game abilities and effects, an ability name and description, and a faction symbol. Fighters are the main components of the game and stay on the battlefield until they're defeated. Tactics, on the other hand, provide one-time effects after which they are discarded to the graveyard. Tactics have a name and tactical art, action cost, ability description, and faction symbol. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into three phases. Start phase, action phase, end phase. First up, in the start phase, the active player checks to see if an enemy fighter occupies their gates. If so, that player is now considered sieged. A sieged player must put the top card of their deck into their graveyard. If the revealed card is the player's stronghold card, their last card, they lose the game. However, if the player isn't sieged, they draw a card from their deck into their hand. Next up in the action phase. The active player takes two actions from a number of options. They may take the same type of action twice and do it in any order. Draw. The active player draws a card from their deck into their hand. Deploy. The player places a fighter from their hand onto the battlefield, either on an empty square in their back row or on top of a friendly fighter in their back row that shares at least one trait with it. When sharing a space in this way, fighters form a stack. Only the topmost fighter in a stack counts as being in play, and thus only they can be activated for actions, sacrificed, destroyed, or even targeted. You don't add up the power of fighters in a stack, only the topmost fighter applies. Move. The player may move one fighter to an orthogonally adjacent empty square. That fighter then becomes fatigued. There are several actions that can cause a fighter to become fatigued, which means that fighter cannot take further actions this turn unless otherwise noted by a game effect. Attack. The player chooses an enemy fighter that is orthogonally adjacent to one of their fighters and proceeds through three steps. First, they determine power by calculating the power value of each fighter, adding any modifiers. Then, they determine winner. If the attacking fighter has greater power, the enemy fighter is destroyed and moved to the graveyard. If the fighters have equal power, they are both destroyed. And if the enemy fighter has greater power, the attacking fighter is destroyed. Whoops, that's orcish for f 
Finally, they resolve. If the enemy fighter's square is now empty, the surviving fighter or stack moves into that square. The attacking fighter becomes fatigued or achieves fatigality. Defend. This action can only be taken if the active player has an enemy fighter in their gates. They discard a number of cards of their choosing equal to the power of that fighter. That fighter is then destroyed. Sick, but also expensive. Usability. The active player chooses a fighter with an action ability, this symbol, and resolves its effects. That fighter becomes fatigued. Play tactics. This allows the player to play a tactic card from their hand, resolving its effects and then placing it into the graveyard. Tactic cards have an action cost. It's either zero, one, or two actions, which are the number of actions a player must expend to play them. And those are all the actions. After the active player has completed both actions, play moves to the end phase. All of their fighters lose the fatigue status, and the opposing player's turn can now begin. Rounds continue with players deploying and destroying fighters, each approaching the gates of their enemy. A player wins by successfully sieging their opponent's stronghold when they have no cards left to draw. And that's the basics of Goodmack. There's also a couple of alternative game modes for four players described on page 17 of the rules. When playing either a 2v2 team game or free-for-all, play occurs on a larger battlefield with 21 squares with stronghold spaces in the corners. Thanks for learning this game with me. I'm Becca Scott. This is Good Time Society, and I'm headed underground to worship the abyssal demons with the Delguan. But while I'm doing that, you should go play this game right after you give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and swear to me right here and now to come on back here for more great games and good times. See ya!